That would be great. And uh, welcome to our Let's Talk Q&D Education Series. This is our final one of 2024, and we're very excited to bring you information on diabetes technology. Our speakers will have approximately 45 minutes total for the discussion. There, We have four speakers, and they'll each be about nine, 10 minutes, and then we will open it up to Q&A at the end of the session. If this is your first time joining us, welcome. If you've been here before, thank you and welcome back. Uh, JDRF is a global leader working towards an end to type 1 diabetes through research, funding, and advocacy. JDRF also supports people and families in the T1D community from the time of diagnosis by helping those living with T1D to have better, healthier, and safer lives while we work to find a cure. As visitors on this land, I would like to begin by respectfully acknowledging that the JRF Canada National Support Office is located on the traditional lands of the Mississaugas of the Credit, the Anishinaabeg, the Chippewa, the Haudenosaunee, and the Wendat people. So just a couple of things before we get started, if I can remind you again to make sure that you keep your microphone muted so that we can hear our presenters. We are recording the session to post to YouTube tomorrow, so if you don't want to be on camera, now is the time to turn it off. And uh, if you could just keep your questions to the chat and we'll try our best to get to all of them um, as we can. We have an hour tonight and we'll do our best to get to everyone and to get through all of your questions. So now I'm also just wanna remind everybody that device coverage is provincial and it's not something that the speakers can touch on in their presentations or the Q&A. And as well, we are unable to speak to when the next generation of devices might be approved by Health Canada as we have no knowledge of that. But we are excited to speak to you about the devices being presented tonight. We will have uh, contact information for everybody that we will send out tomorrow if you have any follow-up questions. And with that, let's get started. So we will have speaking in this order from Dexcom, Ethan Robson, inside spe sales specialist who's been living with T1D himself for 14 years, from Medtronic, Jake Balaka, sales associate, to talk about the Omnipod, Lily May Wang, Territory Manager, and from Tandon, Karen Laporte, Territory Manager, Eastern Region. So, Ethan, over to you. Thank you very much, Ruth. Can you hear me? I can. Awesome. So, first off, again, I want to say a huge thank you to the JDRF for hosting tonight and giving me and all the other presenters the opportunity to be here and share all, share with you all. I'm, I'm as, as mentioned by Ruth, I've been living with diabetes myself for about 14 years. And um, honestly, in that time, I've had the opportunity to see the amazing development in diabetes tech and the constant advancements that are being made. It's honestly amazing to see what was available when I was diagnosed 14 years ago versus how far we've come today. And I mean, that's why I'm so proud to be here to share that we've launched our most advanced CGM system ever in the Dexcom G7. Oh. Here. Um, so there's a lot to love about G7. Um, if you had a lot, the opportunity to try G6, our previous model, or you may know someone who is currently using it, uh, you may know something of what I'm talking about. We've completely redesigned G7 from the ground up with simplicity, simplicity being top of mind. We've made it as intuitive as possible so each user can personalize it for their own specific needs. Uh, in our eyes, no two people's diabetes are the same. So any system you choose needs to work for you. Um, G7 is approved for people with all types of diabetes, whether it's type one or type two. With G7, We've expanded that to include pregnancy. And currently in Canada, it's the only CGM approved by Health Canada for use during pregnancy. We've made G7 simple so that people of all ages can use and get the data they need to make the right treatment decisions. Um, starting from ages two and going all the way up to our most senior folks, Dexcom G7 can be personalized to fit your needs. Alrighty, so why is CGM? CGMs are a great way to manage your diabetes. And for any of you who are new to CGMs, you might be wondering 
what is so special about CGM? Why should I try it? Or how is this supposed to help me? Given that glucose data is very much a life and death information in most cases, those would all be very fair questions. And that's honestly exactly why Dexcom CGM is recommended for so many people and by so many people with diabetes. With Dexcom, your glucose levels are measured continuously, giving you greater visibility and allowing for more data from for meal activity and treatment choices. Dexcom G6 and G7 will show you the direction your glucose is heading and how fast it's moving and can alert you to any highs and lows you experience with settings that you can personalize. Dexcom also has a predictive urgent low soon alert, which can warn you up to 20 minutes before an urgent low. If you've never used a CGM before, this is the thing to be able to know before you're low equals fairly life-changing and in some cases life-saving as well as a lot less time and mental bandwidth spent on worrying about your diabetes and where you're at because you'll always know With G7, we relied heavily on feedback from the diabetes community to make enhancements that would be meaningful in real life. The sensor is now all in one, so no separate transmitter, and is 60% smaller than the G6. The sensor is the smallest sensor available in Canada now. The all-in-one applicator that comes with the G7 can be used right out of the box with no assembly, making G7 super simple to apply with a three-step insertion. So basically you unscrew the cap, you press it into the skin and you push your button and you're off to the races. To make the user experience echo the simplicity of G7, we redesigned the whole app experience with bright visuals and voiceover assistance. In the G7 app itself, the clarity data that used to be separate is now integrated, like your glucose summary and time and range so that seeing your long-term data is much easier. You've also got the ability to enter events and add flexible notes, which is an addition. So it's easier to correlate what's happening on a certain day with an activity, like traveling exams, soccer practice, or whatever life throws at you. The optional receiver is still there, but it's been improved you add navigational buttons that are designed more like a TV remote, meaning folks with mobility issues can have an easier time navigating the menu. It's also small enough to fit into your pocket, and it also holds a seven-day battery charge. The major thing we needed to wanted to address with G7 and was a major ask for the community was sustainability. And with G7, we answered that call. The G7 was designed to incorporate sustainability in mind. As you can see from the data on the screen, we've had we made significant steps to reduce the waste created by our packaging when compared to the G6. Honestly, this is the packaging. It used to be a three pack of sensors. It now comes separate and it's way smaller than what it used to be. And I know for us, there's ongoing efforts to further reduce material consumption and waste and keep keep sustainability front of mind. With G7, thing we've been hearing the most fanfare about is our improved warm-up time. With a 30-minute warm-up, we've reduced it from two hours on the G6, which means less downtime and mini minimizing the chance of missing any important alerts. The sensor warm-up starts as soon as the sensor is applied. So as soon as you apply it, within 30 minutes or even less, you'll have your data. On the opposite end, we've added a 12-hour grace period. Due to the fact that life doesn't always have uh, or follow a perfect schedule. As we all know, things come at you left, right, and center, and you got to adjust. For example, like if you know your kids sensor is going to inspire, expire in the middle of the day, what do you do? 
you either let it expire or you change the sensor right then and there. With the 12 hour grace period that was added, it was designed to offer that flexibility so you can change out the sensor at a time when it's most convenient for you. We've also kept the additional secondary displays. So there's still going to be Android Quick Glance, Apple Widgets, and the ability to stream your data through to your Apple Watch. And additional smartwatches as well. It's not specific to Apple. As I mentioned before, Dexcom G7 is a designed for all types of diabetes. We've added more personalized alerts to suit your lifestyle. We've had smart alerts to help more and really be less intrusive by having the ability to shut off different ones. Um, major one, pardon me, that comes to mind is the delayed first high. So if your blood sugar is climbing after a meal, it won't alert you after it reaches that threshold that you set. But if you stay above that threshold, it will alert you then. Um, there's also customizable quiet modes that can be personalized to balance safety and discretion within your life. Again, C G7 is a the first CGM to also be approved by Health Canada for use during pregnancy, which is huge. Pregnancy can have its own complications on top of diabetes. And so having that ease of use and knowledge and trust there is a game changer. All right, Ethan, this, I just got to give you your one minute warning. Thank yeah. you very much. Okay. I almost there. I've had the option to discreetly place the sensor given the size. It can be placed on the back of the arm, the abdomen, or the upper buttock in children ages two to six. And then finally, I want to take a second to say that all of none of these features matter if you don't get accurate readings that you can trust. And G7 is the most accurate sensor on the market, period. Sensors are the only thing we do, and I hope you can see by this presentation our commitment to excellence and to truly listening to the needs of the community. That being said, to plug our, our support network here, the number on the screen will get you connected with general inquiries, insurance questions, product replacements and troubleshooting, and our new user training and support through Dexcom Care, our CDE team. Um, everybody is available through the phone. Uh, tech support is 24 seven, and most of the other departments are Monday to Friday. I, my part, my department itself with the inside sales team, we deal with the insurance questions. So I'm happy to take any, any that you have after the presentation um, in a more private and one-on-one -on -one setting or any of my team can help. Um, that being said, G7 is exclusively available at the pharmacies. So if you have any questions regarding that or need any assistance getting set up there, please give our teams a call. We'll be happy to help. And then if you're currently on G6 or looking to make the switch, we would be happy to make that easy for you as well. Thanks for, for helping me present. Thanks, Ethan. There's also, um, Ethan, there's quite a few questions in the chat specific to your presentation if you wanted to just take a look and possibly respond. But I'd like to introduce Jacob from Medtronic who will be doing this presentation. Thank you, Ethan, and thank you, Jacob. You are muted, Jacob. There we go. And you can hear me OK? We can hear you. Beautiful. Hello, everyone. Uh, like, um, I'm very honored to be here. My name is Jacob Balaka, like uh, Ruth mentioned, with Medtronic. Um, and again, just wanted to thank JDRF for uh, bringing us out and giving us the time of your evening here to present just on our newest and uh, latest and greatest uh, pump. So before I kind of get into everything, I just kind of wanted to slowly dive in with uh, a little intro video here. Hi, I'm Daniela Rojas. I'm Mike. Hi, I'm Connor. 
I'm Alex. And I am on the Minimet 780G system with the new meal detection technology. The new meal detection technology allows my pump to know I'm going high after a meal, so the actor correct will come in and take care of it. It has given me a lot of peace in regards to food. I can have food whenever I want it, not whenever I have to. I got my love of food back. Sometimes I'm so caught up in life that I forget to bolus before a meal, but I know that the Minimed 780G has me covered. It's provided a lot of flexibility and freedom with my scheduling. Back in high school, I'd have to leave class to, you know, maybe take something for a low or go to a test or something. But in college, I've been able to actually go to class and stay there the whole time. Because the Minimed 780G system is automatically adjusting insulin delivery, the system gave me a lot more freedom to like hang out with my friends and just do stuff that I couldn't do before. When I go to a sleepover, they used to text me like maybe like every 20 minutes asking what my blood sugar was. <laughs> but now I can go and they will text me like maybe once. I got the freedom to hang out with my friends back. I got my independence back on the Minimed 780G system. Perfect. So like I was mentioning here with Medtronic and here to chat about our new 780G system uh, that's now out and about here in Canada uh, since about April of this year. Um, and the big thing that we wanted to, you know, we're seeing a lot of our patients that have been able to hop on board and take advantage of this technology is kind of what they're getting back. So the big thing here, we heard about a few of our uh, people using the system that are getting their love for food back, getting their independence back. So the big thing here is people are able to now uh, enjoy those things that you know come with living with type one you're you know kind of not able to really enjoy in its fullest and so with the 780g system you know people are able to really get back into those things and enjoy it uh you know as as they should so with that like i said the 780g system here in canada this is everything that it includes right now um like i said it was approved back in and out and about since about april here so we have the pump itself i think you guys can see my cursor on the screen uh, but the pump itself our own Medtronic sensor that connects with the pump, and then it all loops back through um, a mobile device now as well. So there's an app that's uh, connected with it. So it's kind of a nice little um, looping system right here. So for, I, I know we have many different people coming from different areas uh, with managing their type one, whether that's on a pump or, or not. So I'll try to keep this um, as uh, high level as I can, but we can see here this lovely lady, you know, using the 780 herself. So we can see on uh, the right there, her pump, and then on the left, you know, she has her sensor and all of this info is getting connected to her smartphone here. Um, the nice thing with this now is, like I mentioned, when it's connected to a smartphone, you're able to get the real data of not just what our sensor and what the sensor is telling you, but actually what the pump is doing with it. So we can see here the current sensor reading of a 5.5, um, the amount of insulin delivered with these um, micro basils and auto corrections, which I'll chat about a little bit more uh, in the next couple slides. Um, and then also just that uh, sensor glucose trend. So where you've been, where you're going, and you can kind of basically see this in real time. Um, on your phone so you're not having to pull your pump out um, if if not and if not need be and for uh, those of who are still on um, you know injections and kind of looking into to pump therapy basically with now our system and uh, a new site that we have as well which i'll chat about this equates to using the system about on average about 90 less 90 percent less injections for those using the system so Definitely big leaps and bounds. And, and, and like Ethan mentioned earlier, just being the fact that we've made so many strides in the last handful of years. And so we're so happy to obviously have this here now in Canada and, um, you know, people being able to really see the benefits of, of, of using it. So. So with the 780, like I said, there's a lot that's able to, it's a lot that it's able to do. Um, and one of many things is it's basically able to do auto corrections, which are delivered every five minutes. So it's the only system that's doing corrections every five minutes on an as needed basis um, using this smart guard technology. It also has the lowest available uh, target that's out in the market right now. So you're able to actually target the pump um, to to basically target your sugar to a 5.5, but you also have flexible changes there. So you can choose a 5.5, 6.1, or a 6.7. So you kind of have that customization and personal, uh, personal ability to kind of set up the pump how you want it to work. Again, not every uh, person of the type one, it works the same. So you kind of have that flexibility there. 
And we've seen on the video too, many people talking about, you know, the one was like the love for food back and the mealtime correction. So now with this system too, is what's uh, called meal detection technology. So it's able to cover for underestimated carbs. So again, carb counting is one of the biggest tasks that there is out there. But even if you're able to get it right on the on the teeth and, and look at all the boxes and get all the numbers right, you can still tell that the numbers don't always, um, you know, go exactly how we want them to. So with this, it's able to actually connect or basically detect that uh, a meal was had and actually compensate for, like I said, underestimated carbs, which has been a huge thing. And, and you know, people able to really get that freedom back and, and release that burden of, you know, getting perfect on their carb count every time. And then also um, we have uh, our a new infusion set, which is called our extended wear infusion set, which is right here on the right of the pump. And so this doubles the wear. So now this is a seven day wear inf set infusion set. So once every seven days, you can change your infusion set again, kind of releasing that burden of having to kind of stay on top of things. And again, people able to really kind of get their life back and get, you know, many things back that, that, that they're looking for. And when you're using this system, which is called SmartGuard, when the it's doing auto corrections and adjustments for you, uh, people are seeing up to 80% time in range, that time they're spending in between a 3.9 and a 10, about 80%. And again, the pump doing 95% of the work here, which is, which is amazing. So like I mentioned, I talked about uh, what are called auto basils and auto corrections. So this one, I'll just go over quickly kind of how auto basil works. So how our system is, we can see this uh, gray line is a sensor uh, glucose trend. So um, this person started off at a 5.5. As their sensor glucose rises, the sensor is checking every five minutes and an auto basil is adjusted in that five minute interval as well. So we can see here as they start to increase, the auto basil is correcting as well. So it's real time um, and acting to basically prevent any highs. And what I mentioned earlier, being able to actually have people spend that, you know, up to 80% time in range. And then as it also goes down to, which is amazing to see, you know, as the uh, sensors. Hey, try to keep going through um so yeah so and, and then the opposite happens as well so if you are starting to trend down the pump is checking every five minutes adjusting the amount of insulin it's giving you for that five minutes and actually will shut off if need be for as long as it has to to basically keep you in that target range and so there's many things that we do in, in, in day to day with living with type one, but with auto basal, it basically is adjusting your basal rate 288 times in a day, which is far beyond anyone could even try to do. So having a system that's able to be proactive um, in treating highs and lows is kind of the route and in, in what we're able to see here with auto basal in the smart guard 780G. And the other half of that is what I was chatting about, which is auto correction. So many people in the video were chatting about meal time detection. And so this is where the pump even gets even more elite in how it's dealing with highs. So as this person's increasing or their blood sugar is increasing, the auto basil is doing its best. But maybe for this instance, um, you know, the carb count was off for their meal. So they're going a little bit higher and these basils can't quite help out. So it can detect that it's a meal and basically give you even more of a top up. And so that's where these auto corrections come into place here. So we can see these blue lines are actually auto corrections and they're able to be more aggressive than these basils to actually detect that there's a meal been had. I can be a little bit more aggressive and stop that high from occurring anymore. And then again, work its way back down. So these auto corrections, how ours works is it's every five minutes. So it's as needed and they're very, very small amounts. But the whole thing for us is to be proactive on it. So it's able to detect, OK, there's a, a rapid rise in glucose. It needs a little top up to basically stop it. And then I'll check five minutes later. And as we plateau it, bring it back down. So again, every five minutes, constantly checking in and constantly adjusting on your behalf. And you won't have to be like notified about it to basically be told that the pump is doing this or that. Uh, it's just doing it all in the background for you so you can keep going about your day. All right, Ethan, I've got to give you your one minute warning. Okay, perfect. Thank you. And so again, with um, all the, that comes with Medtronic, it's our own pump and our own sensor and our own uh, infusion set. So it's a one-stop shop, which is what Medtronic is. And with that, you also get 
all the tech support that comes with it. So from getting set up on the pump and, and having education around to make sure that you're successful with it, to all the way if there is any issues with the pump, 24-7 um, tech support to help with pump replacements. Um, our online shop, again, you can just go there and get all, anything from your sites all the way to the sensors. Um, and then with that, we also have a bunch of different patient specific programs to basically get people access to sensor technology and being able to use 780G, do insurance checks for you as well. Um, and if as new tech comes out, we can also do upgrades. So there's a lot coming or a lot there um, and on a national and a, a global level. And lastly, right now uh, we have a 784-780. So for anyone who is maybe in the middle of their warranty period um, and they're looking to upgrade or looking to get onto the system, um, right now we have a 784-780 going on. So you're able to access uh, this great new technology and again, get, get back whatever it is in your life that is most important to you. So I'll throw it back to Ruth there. Thanks for everyone. And I'll be uh, obviously sticking around for some questions as they come through at the end of the Q&A. And uh, thank you so much, Jacob. I called you Ethan before, and I apologize. I was looking at Ethan <laughs> while I was <laughs> talking oh, to you. It's all good. Uh, there's some questions in the chat now. Um, feel free to respond if you'd like. And I'd like to turn it over to Lily Bain, who will be talking about the Omnipod. Perfect. Uh, give me one second. Loading. Let Ruth, let me just let me know when can you is this presentation mode for you? It is. Uh, yeah. It is. Perfect. Thank okay. You. Um first of all, yes, I like to thank you, JDRF, and, and for everybody else that uh, just that's gonna be presenting here today. Um, I think it's pretty hard to follow with a video. I don't have a nice fancy video to show. That was pretty nice. Um, my name is Lily May, Lily May Wong. And I am part of the Omnipod family. Um, I am really here to give you a really quick overview of what the Omnipod Dash system can offer. Really, the biggest difference and benefit to the Dash system is really simplicity. Um, simply, there are two parts. As you can see on the slide, there is the personal diabetes manager, which we call the PDM. And then there is the pod. Uh, which you see on the right hand side. The PDM itself is touchscreen. It communicates with the pod via Bluetooth technology and is really, really simple and intuitive to use. The pod um, itself is tubeless, is lightweight, and really can be worn anywhere insulin can be injected. It provides up to three days of nonstop insulin delivery. I think what's important to note is that Omnipod Dash. It's also right now the only insulin pump delivery system available that is tubeless or having no tubing. So really, you know, think about having the control of a pump, of an insulin pump, the freedom from multiple daily injections while enjoying the freedom of being tangle free um, and the ability to be really discreet as well. It has been a game changer and has changed the many li like the lives of many, many people living with diabetes. Oops, uh, let me go back one slide. Let's first talk a little bit about the pod. Um, the pod, as you see here, it's um, waterproof. It's attached to your body, um, really like, um, like a sticker. And again, there are no tubings associated with it. And, but what does that really mean? And what does that really mean for you? First, it means that you have the flexibility and the freedom to wear the pod really anywhere you can inject insulin without having to worry about getting tangled or pulled. So for example, it can be worn on your arms, your legs, your abdomen, your back, um, really anywhere. And it is really one less thing anybody has to really worry about, especially when you're, deci you're deciding on um, what to wear, you know, whether it's a cute dress or whether it's worn under, you know, your heavy big hockey gear. It also means um, that there's a there's more sites you can use, right? And that could be a pretty big clinical benefit. In other words, um, you have more sites to rotate, and therefore maybe that could potentially prevent more scarring or irritation for your skin. Secondly, the insertion process for the cannula is 100% automatic. Uh, that means you do not have to see or touch a needle. 
the entire process to start a pod really only take minutes. And we'll talk a little bit more about that on the next slide. Third, but not last, um, the pod is waterproof. And again, what does that mean? That really means that you don't have to connect and disconnect when you go for a swim or really do any other activity. So imagine yourself being able to sort of jump into the pool or jump into the ocean with your friends and family without a second thought, without having to think about, you know, connecting or disconnecting your pod or your, your sorry, your pump. And obviously, you don't have to worry about that every day when you're taking a shower or simply relaxing in a bath. But also maybe imagine yourself not having to worry about thinking about maybe finding a fanny pack or finding pockets, um, right, when you're playing a game of basketball or when, you know, your child is at a dance recital dancing. So those are some of the things to consider. So when we're talking, this slide really wants to show, this slide really wants to demonstrate is how easy it is to start um, the DASH system. There are only really three steps. So step one, you basically fill the pod with insulin. The syringe is provided with a package. The pod itself would also automatically prime so that you don't have to worry about any air bubbles that are in the system, which a lot of people do appreciate. Step two simply is to remove the sticker of the pod and stick it on your body. And again, you can really place it anywhere you can inject insulin. And step three, as you can see, is really just a few taps on the PDM or the personal diabetes manager. Um, and, you, and, and that's it, you can complete the whole process of starting the pod. And it literally will take a minute or just a few minutes. And again, it really speaks to the simplicity and the ease of use of the DASH system which means hopefully making life living with diabetes just a little bit simpler and easier. And really, I just want to take a couple of minutes, maybe a minute to take about two amazing, incredible offers and programs that we do have available um, with Omnipod. If you're interested in thinking about starting Dash or the Omnipod Dash system, um, we have a program called the Pod Promise uh, Program. And so if you start it and we hope you love it, but for whatever reason, if it's not right for you or it doesn't work out, you are eligible for a full refund within the first 90 days. And for those of you that are already, already on another pump and is interested um, just to see what being tubeless is like or having that freedom to be discreet, uh, we have a program called Cut the Cord. Uh, basically, you will be provided with a PDM at no cost with the purchase of one box of pods. Um, so if you want some information on that, feel free to connect with our Omnipod team or speak to your doctor or your diabetes as well, uh, diabetes team as well for further information. And lastly, um, we have demo pods that are available at no cost um, for you to try. What it is, it is a non-functional pod, and it's an amazing way to experience what it would be like um, to wear a pod and do your day-to-day -day activities. Um, it is the same size, the same weight, the same form factor as an actual pod would be. So this is a great way of learning about um, how it's like to wear a, the, uh, the Omnipod system. Again, you can reach out to um, our team directly, or you can speak to your diabetes team or your doctor uh, if you have any further questions. And I would highly encourage you to just give it a try. It's no cost. Um, and it's a really good way to see if this is something that might be great for you. And, and that's it. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Lily May. Uh, Amanda, are you? I see you. Um, Amanda has jumped in very, very last minute to present on behalf of Tandem. So very appreciative of her coming in. Um, the last person who was supposed to join had some technical difficulties. So Amanda, um, if you had any technical difficulties as well, we totally understand. But are you ready to go? I'm ready. Let's okay. fingers crossed here. OK, you should be able to see thinking about it yeah we're good to go 
Okay, so yes, everyone, I am Amanda. I am excited to be be joining you tonight, stepping in for, for my colleague here. So I am one of the clinical diabetes specialist with Tandem. Uh, I also have diabetes and, and wear the pump myself. So tonight I'll be talking to you a little bit about Tandem, who we are, and then focusing on our control IQ technology. So Tandem, essentially came to be based on user feedback. So healthcare providers, people who are, were already on pumps, people who were on injections looking to get on pumps. And we really base the system off of user feedback. So within Tandem, there is what's called our human factors uh, department, and they essentially take the feedback from individuals and put it into how we create the pump, how we make the menus flow. And the goal of that is to really have a easy to use system. One of the things that I have found really cool, uh, Tandem's been in Canada for about five years. And what we've seen is advancement and software updates to the system, our most recent one that we had really came back from user feedback. And so we do listen to, you know, your experience wearing the pumps and how we can make that experience better. So a couple of our, our features in the pump, one is that it is a color touch screen. So the pump screen itself is touch screen. At this point, right, with technology, most of the technology you're used to is already touch screen. It is a rechargeable battery, so we're not having to purchase and, and have disposable batteries. As well, we're able to offer remote software updates. So as that technology advances, we can put it out to your pump. The pump itself has a durable housing to it. Uh, we won't, won't spend too much time talking about that. When I stop sharing my screen, I can hold a pump up if everyone wants to see it. And then a small size, right? So since we are wearing these devices, one of the big pieces of feedback from users is wanting it to be smaller. So these are some of the basic features around the actual physical component to the pump. But what I'll be spending a bit more time talking about is our Control IQ technology. Okay, so what Control IQ is, is it's the terminology for our advanced hybrid closed loop technology. So that is our automation within the pump. From individuals using Control IQ, we're seeing increased time and range, typically an additional 2.6 hours per day, additional time and range. And then from our, our individuals wearing the pump, right, over 95%, over we've got 97% said it's easy to use. And we know with diabetes, there are so many extra decisions that you're having to make in a day, right, every day, day in and day out. And so we want to try and relieve some of that burden uh, with our automation. So we'll take a closer look into how Control IQ is, is running with the pump. So it is designed to increase our time and range. And time and range is defined as that blood sugar range between 3.9 and 10. It is currently used with the Dexcom G6. Okay, that is, is the current one available. There are plans to advance as we heard from our, our lovely Dexcom presentation. We are working towards that integration as well. The way that that automation works is there's two components to it. So in conjunction with your Dexcom, the system is looking at your glucose levels 30 minutes in advance. So it's always trying to be predictive as opposed to being reactive to what's currently happening. So trying to get ahead of the curve. So the two components here is our basal modulation. Right? So for anyone who's new to pump therapy, the way I like to describe the basal is that's our base. It's replacing our long acting insulin. And this basal modulation can occur every five minutes. And it can increase to roughly four times as much as our set rates. The other component is that on top of that five minute basal modulation, we can also receive automatic correction boluses. And these boluses, again, the way that I like to teach and remember is when we bolus a bowl of food, so that's how I always remember the difference between basal and bolus. 
And so our boluses are there to help at times where, you know, we do our best to carb count, but everyone knows that's one of the most challenging things to get, get right with our diabetes management is that accurate carb count. So when we're not exactly correct in our, our carb count, we're off, these automatic correction boluses are going to help bring us back down into target. So we'll look at this slide here, and I know it looks like a lot to start, so I'll take you through it. So as we mentioned, right, it's ideally trying to keep us between that 3.9 and 10 range. So we're trying to prevent both the lows and the highs. So there's a couple different ways that it can do it. So one of the ways is that that five minute basal pulse of insulin, it can decrease that insulin going through if it predicts in 30 minutes that your sensor glucose reading is going to drop below a 6.25. If it did that, and now within 30 minutes, it's predicting that you're going to drop below a 3.9, it will actually stop that basal insulin. Right? And again, all of this is happening 30 minutes in advance so that instead of following this line and actually going low, we would be able to help prevent that low. If we're predicted to stay within our target, then the system is going to deliver that basal rate, right, that five minute pulse as normal. But on the opposite end, when we're trying to help prevent a higher blood sugar reading, if the system sees in 30 minutes that we're predicted to go above an 8.9, it's going to start to increase that five minute pulse of insulin. And on top of that, if it sees that we're now predicted to go above a 10, it may give one of those bigger correction boluses. So you don't have to, to memorize any of these numbers. I won't test you at the end, but this is really outlining how is control IQ working in the background? Okay. There's a couple of additional unique features. So one of these features is our sleep activity. So within control IQ, we can tell the system when we're sleeping and additionally when we're exercising. And what this is meant to do is it's meant to tell the algorithm that our, our state, right, we're not just sitting at our desk, now we're sleeping or I'm out exercising, that something has changed. And it's going to tell the algorithm to adjust differently based on this information. So what happens when we're sleeping is that we're, we're typically not eating as we're sleeping, unless maybe you're a sleepwalker and you're doing that at the same time. But while we're sleeping, we're not eating. And so what the system does is it sets an even tighter window for that basal modulation. So we can see here 6.25 to 6.7. And the goal is to be able to wake up at kind of a, a beautiful number in the morning to start our day so that we're not having to start our day, you know, fighting a low that we've had overnight. Or sometimes when we wake up high, then we know the rest of the day is going to be more challenging because we're already resistant in the morning, our sugar's high. So using this sleep feature, it's really trying to set us up for success every morning by starting in target range. The other one here is called exercise activity. And so what exercise activity does, I like to say it hits the brakes early, right? So it's going to sense that if our blood glucose is dropping, it's going to start doing that decrease or suspension at an earlier value. And what you can use exercise activity for doesn't just have to be, you know, sweating it out on the treadmill. You can use it for more gentle exercise, like walking the dog. You can even use it for when you have to get your fasting blood work and you're not eating and you want to make sure you don't go low. That exercise activity can provide additional protection from times where we're, we're more at risk of dropping low. The other nice thing is that it really is very easy to use. So for sleep, we can set a schedule. 
so that it will automatically go into sleep and automatically exit out of sleep so that we're not having to worry about, right? Another thing to think about with our diabetes. We can program this schedule and you can even have two different schedules. So if you're someone who likes to sleep in on the weekend and you want that sleep to go a bit later, you can absolutely do that. And then the exercise, it's a button push to start and stop at the end of your activity or when you no longer need that extra protection from lows. The other nice thing is that with pairing with the Dexcom, you aren't having to calibrate the system. So as long as your Dexcom and pump are in range to each other and communicating, you know that that automation is happening in the background. So I will share with you our, our virtual, just a simulator here. So what this is, is an app that you can download to your mobile device and you can play around with the pump screens. One thing I will show you here is this tool tips that's turned on. You can toggle that off and then you can go through the app as if it was just a pump. If you have tool tips turned on, it'll teach you about each of those buttons. So if you're brand new to pumps, you might want to start with the tool tips on, if you're already on a pump or you've been doing lots of research already, you may want to turn that tool tips off. So I think I uh, um, I'll stop sharing here. I think we're on time for questions now. Well, we are. Thank you so much, Amanda. That was great. And thank you to everyone. Um, it's been great. People have been answering the questions in the chat as we go. Uh, we've had a number of questions that have been coming up, so I think people haven't seen asking when the G7 is going to be compatible with the control IQ. I'll just repeat the answer. It is going through the regulatory process. We can't provide you with any further updates on that because that's not something that any of us have are privy to that information or that we can answer. So uh, as soon as we know, you will all know as well. And um, there was a question from Medtronic, Jacob. I understand the CGM sensors are being updated. And is there an ETA on the new smart guard sensors? Yeah, so there is the sensor, um, our Guardian 4, which is approved. I don't at this time have an ETA, uh, like a date to give on when we will have them here. Uh, but they have gone through Health Canada. They're approved. Uh, it's just literally waiting. Um, so I don't have an exact date to give you. Um, but as soon as we're, we're aware, then obviously we'll get that out to you right away. And um, just outside of question, um, Lily May, if Omnipod is going to have a CGM available, is this plans for the future? If you can speak to that, I'm not sure, but. Yeah, same. Uh, obviously, new technology is coming. We're not uh, able to speak about it now, um, but stay tuned. <laughs> That's all we can say. Yeah, unfortunately, um, we know exactly the same thing as everybody on this call when it comes to uh, regulatory approvals. So we don't find out until it's been approved, but it is being worked on. I've also seen that People have been uh, responding to each other in the chat, which is one of my favorite things about this event. I enjoy that everybody talks to each other and shares their experience. Raymond, are you going to tell us about your garbage diet in more detail? I see your hand is up. <laughs> you can unmute yourself if you want. Yeah, I, I was actually curious. I know that uh, G7 is not approved with uh, Control IQ in Canada, but is it in production and use in the USA? I just wonder if you know, that partnership is continuing. I'm on I don't think X2 that's anything and we can answer here. Unfortunately, we can only speak to what's going on in Canada. Oh, God. I know okay, that's thanks. not the answer you were looking for, but unfortunately, it's the only one that we can give. Um, but I'm glad Thank it's you. been working for you and that you've been keeping your agency. Oh, awesome, guys. In yeah. range. Uh, do we have any other questions? I know most of them have been answered in the chat, uh, but we do have about 10 minutes left if there was anything else that anybody wanted to ask while we have our guests on. And I just wanted to thank Ethan and Jacob and Lily May. And, and I don't want to say particularly Amanda, but particularly Amanda for jumping in last minute, but to all four of you for giving 
your Thursday evening and on American Thanksgiving. I don't know if you watch football or not, but I'm grateful that you were all here and shared your time and expertise with us. And um, if you did have any other questions, now is the time I have a to question. ask. Oh, okay. Uh, um, it, I, the chat, there's so much going on, but it's for Ethan. Um, I'm on a G6 and I do it with the iPhone. However, I also have the reader as backup, it's safety, and I used the reader before I went to the iPhone. The G7 is available, I'm on the pod, but I do the DIY, so close your ears, Lily Mae, you don't want to hear that, but it's absolutely excellent, I love it, so it's kind of the best of all of the pods out there. Anyway, my question, Ethan, you might be able to help me is, if I move to the G7 and it does work with my pod, thank you, Lily Mae, but close your ears because it's DIY. Um, what about the reader? Because with the insurance company, they only give you a reader every five years and I've got like a few years left. Do you have any thoughts on that? Because I don't want to go to the G7 without a backup reader. That's a great question. Um, unfortunately, I can't see where you're at, but um, the G7 does have a receiver. So I actually have a, one of the boxes here. Um, they will be available at the pharmacy. We do, depending on the province that you're in, you may see some lag behind as stock kind of flows. Oh, into I'm the in market. Alberta, and they do have them here. They're they're available. Oh, okay, I got perfect. a call saying, but I I'm curious with the insurance company because they'll only give me a reader every five years and I'm not at the five year mark for my reader. So I don't, I mean, they're super expensive. The G7, like the receiver for the G7 has actually been significantly reduced in cost. So what I would do and say in that regard is depending on your insurance company, speak with your pharmacist. And if you yeah. run into any, any roadblocks or anything like that, give us a yeah. call. My team okay. specifically could put, could help you and, and help uh, call the pharmacy and kind of coordinate some of that for you. But okay. um, the, G the the receiver is there. It's available in Canada now. So there's not shouldn't be anything stopping you from picking one up and going through. But if anything does, give us a call. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. I see um, Karen had her hand up. Did you want to put your question in the chat or did you want to unmute yourself? Yeah, no. Um, so I was just wondering in regards to pricing, like how does the, say the Tandem and the Dexcom um, being compatible with each other compared to the Medtronic? Like I know insurance will kick in and things like that, but just retail price. My okay. recommendation for that, Karen, is we're going to send out an email tomorrow that's got all the contact information of the vendors. So I would reach out to them directly to get the pricing and then you can do a comparison that way. Okay, perfect, thanks. Okay, I think we have time for like one or two more if we did have. Um, can I ask a question? Sure, I can't see uh, where you are, who you are, with. what's your I'm name, sorry? BL, Cheryl Levy. I just wondered when would the pumps um, be available for for children because right now they have to be changed every three days, which is very painful and uncomfortable. And the new ones seem to be every seven days, um, which would be much better for a, a small child. Is there anything in the works to make a pump um, longer lasting for a small child? So I can at least pipe in with the seven day infusion set is probably what you heard from, from us at Medtronic. So that's now available. So everything is, it's basically, um, you know, that one needle for an infusion set a week. Um, now, granted, that is a significant extension. I, I can't speak obviously again to the future and where things will go, um, but that is available now and, and obviously, you know, able to reduce that burden of more pokes than needed. They're not uh, fun and however you put them. Um, but yeah, that one a week is definitely, you know, a bit impactful and a lot of, many people have been hopping on board with them. Um, but again, probably going with a the theme of some of the great questions we do have in regards to future tech, um, can't speak to too, too much stuff on where, where things are going from at least, um, the Medtronic end. And I think, um, I think that's it. I, I see Brenda has a question about 
uh, they often fought in the CGM, but we actually uh, addressed that already. And again, we can't um, talk about future tech. And Brenda, we're probably not going to talk about DIY on this uh, call uh, just because it's something that uh, we know people do, but we don't. Um, they actively encourage a JDRF, and I'm sure the device manufacturers as well, but perhaps um, Sim might want to speak with you directly. Um, Ruth, were there any other add... questions? Oh, sorry, Lily, go ahead. Yeah, in terms of just, you know, having um, children, I think you with an insulin pump, you won't, you're always going to be wearing it 24-7. Um, I guess with Omnipod, it is very popular with children because it is the insertion process is automatic and really is one poke every three days and it really shouldn't hurt and once it's on the body you you don't usually feel the needle poke again so I don't know if that's helpful or not but um, that is something that I think that's one of the reason why um, a lot of kids do choose Omnipod that is one of the reasons. Okay, I see uh, Mandy has her hand up I think this may be the last question we have time for. Hi, uh, this question is for Jacob in regards to the seven day um, extended wear infusion set. Are the reservoirs larger with that set? And if not, um, can you just change the reservoir and keep the seven day set? Or do you have to change the whole set when you run out of insulin? Yeah, great question. So the set is still seven days. Uh, the reservoir can hold, and this is where it varies if you're, you know, typically the children that use a little bit less insulin. If you're able to um, use 300 units in that seven days, then you're good. So the, the vial or the reservoir can, and can keep insulin stable for that full seven days. Now, in regards to if you do use more than that, obviously, in the seven days, you would just change the reservoir, fill it up to how much you need, but you don't need to change the site. So you don't, it's still only one poke every seven days, um, but the reservoir would obviously just, you know, change the, depending on how often you have to fill it. Um, and so you wouldn't have to basically yeah, pull the whole, whole site out. And the boxes are still the same amount. So you still get a good number of them in there. So that if, yeah, if you are using, you know, say a hundred units a day, um, then obviously you're gonna need to fill up that reservoir twice in that week, um, but it wouldn't be an issue. No, no extra pokes, still only the one, one a week. And the needle stays, like the cannula stays intact for the whole seven days. It doesn't leak or anything? Correct. Yep. It's still in for the seven days. It's it's typical to all the other sites out there. Like you can disconnect, like you can pull the pump right off and just have that little uh, sticker still there that you would attach it back to. But yeah, the site stays on for the full seven days. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. And I think I see Mike, you have your hand up and we have three minutes left. So. Uh, okay. Be well, quick. I'll be. I'll be brief and I won't ask any any questions. It's more just a suggestion because I know that you kind of briefly touched upon, uh, you know, we're not not talking about DIY and we're not talking about timelines. I think that there's a lot of interest out there from folks and I myself actually came hoping that maybe there would be opportunity for discussion, like a wider discussion about more complicated issues such as APIs and such as the homebrew community. I, just a suggestion for the JDRF that maybe we should be having these conversations because they are important. And I think that um, while, you know, there we, we want to know information about the product specifically, I think um, it would be beneficial to some of us as well that are looking to, you know, maximize the impact of the pumps that we're using. I mean, it's fair. I, I totally understand. I think it's beyond the scope of this call with our specific guests, but um, something that I can definitely look into, Mike, and also potentially um, I take care of our blog and our website content, so something that I could possibly put together there. So I appreciate the feedback, and I think on that note, I will let you all have your Thursday evening back. I want to thank our speakers one more time, Ethan, Jacob, Lily May, and Amanda. Thank you to Dex, Omnitronic, Insulate slash Omnipod, and Tandem for um, being with us tonight and for allowing us to bring this information into your homes. We will be uh, pausing for 2023 and not holding one in December as it's holiday time, but we'll be back in January 2024 as will our connection series. And uh, I hope that you'll all join us for the next one. We will have information coming out about that in the new year.
So thank you again to everyone and appreciate you coming tonight. Thank you.